What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the EAFC Career Mode, it's episode number 85 and today we're returning with a brand new season as our 10th, let me say that again, our 10th season gets underway today, it's officially my joint longest CM save ever, if we complete this full season and our first year with Sociedad where... Our budget for the new season is a lot less than I thought it would be. Well, I said coming here was going to be a challenge, and that's what I was looking forward to, a real challenge. But only 82 and three quarter million? That, that's disappointing. Well, in that case, board, you better not have asked me to do the treble this year, because that's what I'm expecting. Win the league, win the cup, win the championship. Guys, come on. Seriously? They've upped the objective stakes as well. They've gone from low priority to medium priority in the Continental. Uh, the other objectives are here for you as well. I've never once failed that shirt sales objective, by the way. So that's practically always a banker. Um, but that's that's a surprise, man. I, I expected to be asked to win the treble because when you're a five-star team, you're practically always asked to win the treble. But 82 and three-quarter mil, that's a... That's a challenge, that. So on the back of winning the uh, Conference League uh, in the last episode, and of course wrapping up a Champions League spot as well, uh, our team for the new season, as we know, looking like this. It, it is decent, don't get me wrong, but there's still a few senior players here that I definitely feel need to go. Uh, I don't want to celebrate Chiesa. I want to keep him as my leader, but I think Fafana is probably going to go might sell Engels, and I think Randall as well, who I was okay with last season, but of course he did get an injury midway through the season as well. I'm probably going to look to sell. But just like last season, Ramiro is not retiring, funny enough. I was expecting to retire, fair enough. Just like last season, um, I'm going to keep it realistic, and it means that in La Liga, uh, you've got to number your players 1 to 25. I'll do that in a moment, just in case anyone's outside of 25, like Le Barbier here. Um, but I also won't go over the squad limit threshold. Can he now grow, Hernandez? Ah, that's annoying. Um, I'm not going to go over the 25-man threshold. So in La Liga, you're uh, limited to 25 players in your first team squad. Again, you can bring in players on emergency freeze or loans, dependent on uh, whether your team has an injury crisis or not. But for, for this save, like I said, we're trying to keep things reasonably realistic. Kind of hard to do that 10 years into a career mode save. But I'm, uh, it's not really expiring the company on the year. Oh, wow, look at that. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to go over the 25-man threshold. I'm going to keep it at 25 men. Yeah, there's a couple of seniors I do want to keep. Ramiro, the captain, even though he is going down. I might look for a new shot stopper this year. Um, although he did make a couple of big saves in that Conference League final win, didn't he? And he was the hero of our uh, shootout win too, saving two of the uh, the four spot kicks Ajax took. Uh, and I do want to keep his A as well. I think I think for Randall, I'm I'm probably going to let him go. I was inconsistent with him last year, and there were times where I actually preferred Carry Cabaru to Randall. So the Kola Moani is going to be a one and done with me. I'm going to add him to the transfer list, and I might possibly. Self a founder as well. He's going down now. He's already gone down the rate into 83 over, and I would like a new CM as well. So I'm going to put them both on the transfer list, but for the rest of them, I'll, I'll probably keep them here. I don't expect much change in this summer window, especially due to the restrictions in the transfer budget. To be fair, I don't know why I'm complaining because I said I wanted a challenge, and that's the reason why we left Milan to join Sociedad. We wanted a challenge, and we've got one. The only problem is I wasn't expecting it to be this much of a challenge. Um, so I think as you look at my shortlist here, I'm obviously looking for a new striker and a new goalkeeper as well. I, I wouldn't mind bringing back one or two more former Sociedad players. But, I, you know, I, I have seen some comments saying, what about Long and Cox? Are you going to bring them back? I don't actually know too much because Milan last year won the Serie A title. And by the way, don't ask me why they've played 39 games. Just a complete glitch from EA there. And I assume it has something to do with us leaving midway through the season. Um, because uh, technically we took over a third of the way through last year uh, with um, with Sociedad. But for Cox and Long, they're both on long-term deals. They both won the Serie A last year. They'll both be going for the league title, for the free P, and also the, uh, the, the... No, it'll be four in a row, wouldn't it now? And for the Champions League this year as well. I think I might just leave them out. I think they kind of fit staying at Milan right now. But uh, yeah, I, I think I have to sell one of Colo Moani or Fafana first. And because of the limited budget... I, I don't want to spend it all on one player. I want to make sure we get good value for money deals. So interestingly enough, starting off with, haven't got Hernandez on the transfer list, but we've got two bids here from Milano and Chelsea. Chelsea themselves had a terrible season last year. Um, and because he's not growing, I wouldn't be against letting him go, but I'm just annoyed that at 23, it seems like he's done. 
Uh, I'm going to turn down the Chelsea bit because last year, of course, he only finished just above the relegation zone. But I'll think about him, and I don't want to be fair, but I'd rather not sell him. Uh, if I if I was going to sell someone, it would probably be Lukeba, who granted his two ratings higher, but he's also 29 years old. So I might, how much could I get for him? Uh, about the same. Two years off in his deal. Uh, I'll think about it. I'll wait for a bit to come in naturally. But uh, yeah, I, I feel we'd have to sell Colo Moani or Fafana before we start thinking about bringing players in. There is a bid for Ise from Luton, but guys, I want to keep him here, man. Fans' favourite dressing room leader. And technically former captain, so I'm not going to let Fafana go. There's a bid for Hato from Juve, but I like him, man. He's in the prime of his career. I think I'm going to keep him with me. But there is the bid from Fafana there, and it's come from Inter Milan. 20.2 mil. I think I could still, I still squeeze a little bit more out of him, though. And again, every penny's going to count here. So I still need a few extra mil here. I still think even at 33, he's worth a bit more than that. So if we go 24 and a quarter million pounds, yep, Inter will meet that straight away. 83 rated, yes, going down gradually, but still a really, really good midfielder. We've, we've got to sacrifice, you know, to raise some cash. So there we go. You see Fafana is off and we'll get 24 and a quarter million for it. Not a bad sale, that all things considered either for a decent midfielder, but now one that's getting on as we're going to make our side a little bit younger. So that will raise our budget ever so slightly slightly but I still want to make a couple more sales before we go after more recruits we've got two bits here for Colo Moani and also one for Van Bommel as well wouldn't be again selling Van Bommel to be fair now they've got Baron Exio back I'll have to think about that but for Colo Moani a big bid from Aston Villa and a swap deal with Genoa I'm, I'm going to go after that Premier League money though and I still think even at 33 years old I can get around 50 million for him because at 85 rated he's still a top European striker so I'm going to ask you and I am right for 50 million pounds for Randall Kola Moani and he's not budging on 44.5 mil but again because of the tension in the top right there I often say there's a small tip for people keep your eye on that if it fills up quickly the manager's got very little in what you call breathing room little wiggle room to get more money but if it fills Fills up slightly, it means they're more likely to only lower their, uh, so they're more willing to cooperate, and you can get more money out of them. Yep, tension is key, and there we go, straight 50 million pound deal there with Janelle. So hopefully, he goes to the Serie A and will take an extra half a million instead. I'm not too sure about the Van Bommel deal personally, though. I do quite like him as a backup winger. There is someone I could bring in to replace him. I've never used him before, and like I said, I like in this save how we're using players that I've not had any, or if I have had experience, very little experience with. So, we should see that deal go through in a moment. As Milan pull out the deal for Hernandez, that's fine. Didn't really want to sell him anyway. And there is a bit for Calderon as well. This is the dual side of fullback we bought in from our rivals, Bill Bow. Absolutely not. This guy was an amazing budget buy from New Yorker. I'm blocking the offers. He's going nowhere. And so as Colo Moani chooses Aston Villa, we'll get 49.5 mil. That raises our budget to just shy of 150 million pounds. I'm not going to go for the striker first. I'm going to go for that new CM we want to replace for Fanner whilst it is so, so tempting to bring Joel Cox back. Like I said, I quite like how we're doing things a little bit differently in this career mode saves to other ones I've done before where we would always re-sign the heroes. I feel after last year, you know, winning that Serie A once again and we're going for the Champions League there... I'm going to leave him at the San Siro alongside Gabriel and instead go after Bilal El Canus, a Moroccan at Manchester United who last season in the Premier League finished in the bottom half of the PL table. They had a shocker of a domestic season. And I'm going to say, mate, 28 years old, you can't afford to waste your prime. Come back to the Champions League and come and play for Real Sociedad. Bilal El Canus. I don't think I was paying much more than market valuation either. Yep, never used them before either, so it's nice to go after players who I've not had any experience using before. I'm going to go over a market valuation bid here and see what Eric Ten Hag says. And while I had a feeling they wouldn't hold me to ransom, and in the end, I think just one mil over the market valuation, that's 59 mil, will probably be enough. And that will be an absolute steal. Old Trafford clearing house. After an underperforming season, and we're going to ransack him. El Canus, come to the Real Arena, mate. He asked for a major pay cut, which I don't think is too unrealistic for a player to take a pay cut to go and play European football, to get out of a club where he's not valued at. But 
a bit too much, I think. So in the end, I offered him 150 grand a week, which I think is fair. Just over 20 grand a week less than he was on at Manchester United on a four-year deal. And Bilal El Canus is in. And what a steal for £59 million. One of the best things about this as well is that I've never used him before. So like I said, I want to sign players that I've got no experience with, or at the very least, just a tiny bit of experience with. But I've never had this guy before. Never once used him before. So it's my first time using him, and I'm really excited to get him in as well. As hard as it was to not go after Joel Cox, I think I made the right choice here for this save. So, yep, Elkanus is in on a four year deal. That'll take him up for all of his prime until 32 years old. And again, on 150 grand a week, makes him a highest earner by far, but I would say definitely justified. 86 overall. He's still getting a little bit better as well. So I think we can get this guy to around 87 to 88 overall. Now, the only problem is we obviously play a 4 3 3, and we also use three, uh, well, two CMs and one DM. Because of the lack of defensive stats, the reasonably low strength, the reasonably low stamina, I'm. I'm not sure whether we should spend this time trying to convert him to CM, get our work rate up from low to medium on defensive, or just change our system to 4 2 3 1. It's a tough one. For now, I might just keep him on balance because he'll still get to 87 overall pretty quickly and let all the stats go up evenly. I'm not too sure about that. 4 2 3 1 or keep him 4 3 3. So that sees our budget still remain quite high, uh, just shy of what we had when we first started the season here. And of course, we have lost a player um, as we're now down to 24 men due to the departure of a fan and Colo Moani and only bringing in one. I'm not sure if to go for a new strike, you know. I really don't. I thought John was pretty solid for me last year since coming back. And Maestro is not a bad backup either. If I was going to get one, it'd have to be a young third choice, I would say. I'm not too sure I need to spend big on a new striker this year, but I have got a couple of bids here for Jaro Hato. Obviously, 26 years old in the prime of his career, and the Netherlands, to be fair, just won the Euro, so I like that. Win his experience. He and Van Bommel, my uh, my Dutch duo, both part of the Netherlands squad that won the Euros, beating Ukraine, funnily enough, in a, uh, a five-goal thriller of a final. So I, I think I'm probably going to keep Hato here. Like I said, if I was going to sell a centre-half, it wouldn't be him, it wouldn't be Hernandez. It would end up being, oh, I'd love Kode back, but I'm going to say no. It would end up being Lukeba. So for now, 26 years old in the prime of his career, just coming on the back of winning the Euros with the Netherlands, I'm, I'm keeping him in my back line. I get asked sometimes why I don't play the preseason tournaments, by the way. Uh, very simple, just because it takes up a bit of time. And to be honest, I, I prefer just having less money to work with, you know. I know it sounds a bit odd, but uh, I, I just I just like a challenge, you know. What can I say? I like the challenge. But, uh, well, there we go. There is a bid for Luke Eber. 45.2 mil from last year's Serie A winners who have just pulled off the free peak. They're going for four in a row now. Would I get a winner's medal for starting the season with Milan? I'm not too sure that counts really, does it? I was only there. Well, I wasn't even there. No, I, I, I sort of left. I stepped back, didn't I? Uh, and just resigned in the summer. But I'm going to ask Milan if they can reach £50 million. Pounds. I, I still think he's at 29 years old. He's worth that, I would say. And yep, they will take it. 50 mil for Luke Eber. Still in the prime at 29, no doubt about that. So bids coming in here, one for Van Bommel that I'm considering, uh, this one for Fresnado though, absolutely not, Valencia, he's going nowhere. And uh, Batiste want to loan in my third choice goalkeeper, why? That's totally pointless now, I'm not going to bother with that, if you want to take him you can buy him, but uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm not going to loan him out, it's a totally pointless deal for us, but I'm just about to see that, there we go, the keeper deal go through, so £50 million pounds there, raises our budget up even more so, as he's off to the San Siro to join the Serie A winners, they'll no doubt about to be going for their fifth in a row, no, fifth in a row now, sorry, and uh, a Champions League as well. But I, I think maybe now I'll go after a star new centre-half as well. Hernandez isn't growing at 83 overall. Hater's in the prime of his career. But I think now go after a well-class centre-back. And I know just the guy I want. But unfortunately, I can't get him. Yep, Domingo Figueroa. This guy is an absolute unit, mate. Six foot six. 26 years old in his prime. 88 rated, but unfortunately Lazio won't let him go as he's just far too good. But to be fair, wouldn't mind this guy. I never used him before. And I must say, I really like his stats well. A couple years older, three ratings lower, yes. But even so, well-class and then some. Right now at Fulham, Usman Diomande. He's not slow, 
but he's got 93 jumping and 93 strength. Great mental stats. So look at his technicals as well. Defensively, he's really solid, but 81 long pass and 83 short pass. To put it plainly, this guy is a great ball playing defender. And right now at Fulham, not in a European competition. I mean, let's be honest here. He should really be playing in the Champions League. Never used him before. I'm bringing him in. Let's go 39.5 mil market valuation. Just like the Red Devils, I feel we should be able to get him only a little bit over market valuation. So I think we're definitely not giving him Crespo. No doubt about it. This guy is a brilliant player. We'll go 42.5 mil. What do you say to that, Fulham? No? Okay. Want a bit more than I was expecting there. Okay, we'll meet somewhere in the middle. Let's go. Let's go 49 million. Oh, no, 49 million, not 59 million. 49 mil, 9.9 .9 mil of devaluation. And Marco Silva is playing hardball. But we've got plenty of time in the transfer window. So if they walk out, they walk out. I don't mind. Got plenty of time. 50 million pounds in the end. We come to the compromise. Same deal for Lukiba. Same rating, yes, but a year younger. And this guy to me looks sublime. A four-year deal on 110 grand a week, and Usman is in to replace Lukiba. Kiba. Yes, only a year younger in the same overall, but I still think he could get a little bit better and never used him before. Fantastic passing stats and also being right footed as well. It's quite helpful because all of our centre halves before we had last year were left footed. So finally, we've got a right footed centre half and it's Diomande arriving from Fulham. So yeah, 28 years old, 85 rated. And as we see here, he can still get a little bit better as well. Four-star week for I me. Mean, to me, this guy just looks like an elite ball-playing defender. And again, being right-footed, crucial with the other set of hearts we've got all being left-footed. I like that a lot. I really, really do. And to me, again, still getting slightly better as well. Don't feel like I need to put him on development plan either, to be honest. So I'll just leave him on balance for now. He, he looks phenomenal, and he'll slide right in alongside Hato if Fernandez isn't growing as he'll drop to the bench. Really happy with that. So down to £70 million now. I don't know about Van Bommel, you know. I'm not against selling him, but to be fair, I, I also quite like him. Never used him before. And we don't need to sell him, per se. It was on a low wage, and he's in the prime of his career. Oh, it's Qua! It's Qua! He, he had a Luton, no way! Um, he's got a Freiburg now. I remember him. He was solid, wasn't he? How's he getting on? 81 overall. Um, do you know what? I might, I might actually look to pick this guy up and, and just negotiate a deal outside of... Uh, of, uh, of the Van Bommel negotiation, because I, I liked him. We sent him to Wolves, he looked pretty solid. I might negotiate a bid there with Freiburg and just leave that Van Bommel deal as it is. Um, I, I still wouldn't mind a new backup fullback. You know, we've obviously got Luciano, the Argentine, and the young, youngster Papadopoulos, but he's not growing at 22 years old. And I did say I wouldn't mind like a new dual-sided fullback, because we've both only got a two-star week for it, and we've got no backup right back. When Calderon, of course, started off as a right back, we now play him left back. So I might possibly add Luciano to the transfer list or Papadopoulos. One of the two, or possibly even both, as Papadopoulos isn't growing. Who could get me more money? Um, that's about the same, really, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to. Do you know what? I might just sell them both, to be honest. I might just put them both on the transfer list and look for a new left back and a new right back. So Papadopoulos wants to leave anyway, so that works out well for everyone involved. There is a bit for Sierra. It's when we played him last year in one game and he didn't save a single shot. So I wouldn't be against cashing in, to be fair. Is he getting any better? 23 years old, 81 overall. It's just because I'm thinking about Romero. He's now down to 83 overall. He's going to need to be replaced at some point in the captain, 37 years old. Um... I don't think Sierra's getting any better, is he? I might possibly be cutthroat here. Sell Sierra, because he's not getting any better. Drop Ramiro to the bench, despite winning the Golden Glove last year. Because he's, he's going down quickly now at uh, an 83 overall. He's going down very quickly. And, um, and maybe look to bring in a star GK. I might have to be cutthroat here, you know. I might have to be a little bit cutthroat. Certainly wasn't planning this, but I'm going to tell Davigo, okay, how much do you, how much do you get for Sierra? If we can get around the tail end of that um, chief executive uh, potential bid of around 31.5 mil, then I'll take that. And Rafa Benitez says, yes, we still believe in the young man. In here, we'll make a quick profit on him. He's off to Galatia. Going to go play for Celta Vigo. I'll, I'll take it. And Ramiro, I think his days are numbered. So Freiburg pulled out of the Van Bommel deal. That's fine. I want to keep him, to be honest. I like him. Uh, but Osasuna are putting a bid for uh, Luciano, who we just put on the transfer list. 
I, I still think I can get a bit more than that, you know. He's 28 in the prime of his career, and I don't mind him. I'm going to wait for a Papadopoulos bid to come in first. I don't want to sell both the left-backs uh, without anyone else lined up. Another bid for him there. Big bid for Fresneda from Chelsea. Absolutely not. And he had a shocker last year. It's going to block the offers there. He's going nowhere. It does seem as though Luciano is likely to leave then. Hopefully, I'll get around 19 to 20 million. And there's the bid for Papadopoulos. It's quite a low one. Is that is that deal going to go through then? Is Sierra going to go? Okay, there we go. Yep, Sierra is off to Celta Vigo. And yeah, with Ramiro going down quickly, I think it's time for the veterans to take a seat off the bench and be a cup goalkeeper for us. And I think we should go after a star new shot stopper as well. Didn't work out with Sierra. He was supposed to be a successor and he was trashing the game we played him in. He wasn't getting any better either. I'm going to go after a star new shot stopper to replace the captain. So our budget now down to just under a hundred million pounds. I've got lots of goalkeepers on the shortlist, including Fuentes, who of course with Luton missed out on qualifying for the Champions League last year. So that would make a lot of sense to be fair. Coming to play for a CL team, you got Pirater, who of course came through the academy with Luton as well, but now he's at a uh, top four team in Inter. Same with Conti at Juve, not we can get him anyway. Maninowski's just moved on as well. And the other is Ibrahim. We've already got one Moroccan. We could possibly bring in another here as well. Um, but to be honest, I had the names on the shortlist here. I honestly think we should go for Fuentes, you know. I really do. They missed out on the Champions League last year. He's 89 rated, 25 years old. He wants to be playing CL football. And we've worked with him before as well. And I do like the idea of bringing back a former Luton fan favourite as well. If not Cox, if not Long, we'll leave them at the San Siro. Fuentes, a few good years at Power Court. He's gave him great service and he was top dog for me as well. Um, I'm going to bring him in to be my successor for Alex Romero. Speak Spanish, being Costa Rican as well. I think this makes absolutely perfect sense. Lino Fuentes, let's bring him in. So we'll go over market valuation bid first of £71 million. And they, uh, well, that's a, uh, an FU a negotiation if I've ever seen it. Come on, guys. I can't afford that. That's ridiculous. How about, uh, how about 85 million? That'll give us just enough for the contract. I still think we can get them cheaper, though, personally. Personally, let's go 82.5 mil. Yep, okay, 82.5 mil. Luton not qualifying for the CL last year. Their star players with Cole Fee wanted to move on. Fuentes, one of the first that should be moving to a CL team. And he's coming to Sociedad. Yeah, I don't know what you guys are saying with me, but I do quite like to sign players that can speak the language when they're moving nations. And Fuentes can, being a Costa Rican native, he is in on a five-year, £100,000 a week deal. And he's reunited with the gaffer, now Real Sociedad as well. Yeah, I think I'll keep Cox and Long at Milan. And that makes sense to me. But for Fuentes right now, one of the best goalkeepers in the world at 89 rated. I'm sorry, but he needs to play Champions League football. And he's going to get it here with Real Sociedad. That would be, I think, his second or maybe third year without CL football at Luton as well, wouldn't it? Because obviously, yeah, we're going to his third year now without CL football there. So that makes total sense to me that he would come in. He took the number one jersey initially, but he's he's not having it. Sorry, mate. Not until Romero retires. He'll be number one until he retires. So taking it off him, it'll be 13 until Alex hangs up the gloves. But he will be starting over the captain this year as well. He's going down rapidly, Romero, which is so frustrating because I don't think it should happen. But... Unfortunately, needs must. Looking for a long-term successor, we've got one. 12 years younger, six ratings higher, and could still probably get a rating or two better as well. Lino Fuentes in. Tough to do it, but you've got to be cutthroat if you want to win the major honours. Ramiro, down to the bench. Fuentes, our new man between the sticks. And so with our budget now down to just under £10 million, pounds, I think personally we've done pretty well here with this Sociedad team. We're down to 24 mil. We still need to bring in at least one more squad player, possibly a, uh, a striker. We still have quite a few bids to get through here with uh, Papadopoulos and also Luciano too. Big bid from Real Madrid. Normally, I wouldn't be against accepting that, but don't forget last year, Real Madrid finished outside of the top four in sixth, I think it was. So we're still a Champions League team. Real Madrid aren't. So because of that, 
I'm going to turn that deal down. But as for Luciano and Papadopoulos, four bids for both players here, two each. Um, I'm, I'm going to negotiate here and uh, I'll, I'll see what I can get out of the clubs. So in the end, it was 19 mil agreed with Almeri with Papadopoulos and Fiorentina wouldn't meet that. So I rejected their offer and I got 20 mil out of both Wolfsburg and Osasuna uh, for Luciano. I quite liked him, you know, as part of our trio of Argentines, but I'm okay to let him go as we look for a new dual-sided backup fullback. So there we go then. Papadopoulos is off. He's going to join our Marriott. Again, we're we'll getting 19 million for that. And I believe that Luciano deal should go through directly afterwards as well. And once the board scheme will be off the top, we'll probably get around 33 mil total for both of those players. And yep, in the end, Luciano decides to stay in Spain and he's off to Osasuna for 20 million pounds. So yeah, 39 million pounds combined for the pair of left backs there. But of course, the board do skew a bit off the top, so it means that our budget has risen. But combined with what we had just before those two sales, it's only now gone up to just shy of 42 mil. So it's, it's not a lot to work with in modern day football. I have a couple of weeks to go before the new season starts. I would like to bring in a little bit more squad depth because now we're down to just 22 men. Of course, I don't want to go over the 23, uh, 25 man, sorry, limit that uh, La Liga have. I, I, I would say personally, we're going to need a new fullback, possibly two. If not two, then at least one dual sided fullback. And I'm still not sure about whether to go for a new CM as well. Car Carboni's in his mid-20s now, not going to get any better. Ize is probably going to go down this year, though, his mid-30s. I don't really know, to be honest. It's a tough one. Uh, but there are there are a few more bids here for Jorel Hato. Big bids coming in, too, from Manchester City and Napoli. But I don't want to sell him, man. I want to keep him here in the prime of his career right now. Coming off the back of winning the Euros with the Netherlands. And there's another bid here for Hernandez, too, this time from Villarreal. Sorry, yeah, from Villarreal. But again, I, I don't think we should sell any more players now. We're down to 22 men. We don't need departures. We need new arrivals. Although one nice thing to note is Crespo has now become an official CM. Yes, took him a long time, but he got there in the end, and he's still getting better as well. I'm, I'm really big on this guy, man. I think he could become an amazing player in this team. Uh, if I can get that weak foot up as well... Uh, yeah, that'll also improve the long shots, the composure, both of which quite low. If I can get that weak foot up to four start, that'll be quite handy, that, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm big on this guy, mate. He looks fantastic. Um, I don't know what to do. Should we end episode there and then come back with the next one? Still a little bit of money to go. Should we, should we try and make one more signing? Yep, I'm going to make my final signing of the big season opener. Lots of drama to kick off the new season here. And I wanted him for so long. And now he's finally available. Nicolas Cabrera of Sevilla narrowly missed out on the La Liga title last season. Finally, Sevilla will let him go, even to a fellow Champions League top four team as we both finished inside the top four last year. And because his contract's up coming the end of the year, we can get him on a cheap deal and possibly even under market valuation as well. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? So yeah, had to wait a long time for this, but as Guinness will tell you, good things come to those that wait. We'll go £32 million initial bid. And they say no. Sorry, Sevilla, but unfortunately, mate, you've got a problem. He's out of contract coming the end of the year. And I think he knows we're the club that's on the rise. 32.5 mil. I'm bringing him in. That'll be my final signing today. Yep, it is perhaps my biggest tip for those that are working on a small or relatively small budget. Go after those players. Their deals are coming the end of the year because you can get them for close to, if not under, market valuation. 32.5 million pound transfer fee. 40 grand a week deal and Nicolas Cabrera finally is a Real Sociedad after I wanted him for the entirety of last season. So yeah, coming in from Sevilla who was so close to the title themselves last year in the end like us, lost out on the final day to a Fletico Madrid. I'm really happy with this deal, man, because again, despite being a left back, I said I wanted a dual sided player. Well, he's right footed, so he can play either left back or right back and I'd say do a pretty solid job despite the fact he only has a three star week for annoyingly he's not getting any better or so it seems but i still think he could grow a rating or two so should i, should I convert him to right back or, or keep him as left back i'm not too sure i might just convert him to right back you know um 
I don't know. For now, I'll keep them on the inverted Y about development plan. I'll have a think about it. But I'll do it for today's episode, guys. So big thank you for watching the big season opener. If you have enjoyed it, then please do drop a like. Four big signings today, including Fuentes coming back, a star new playmaker as well. Lots of business done with Saucy Dad. Very little money remaining. So we might be done for signings, or maybe we'll make one or two in the next episode where we'll start the new season off with our first La Liga games and have the draw for the Champions League group stage as well. Saucy See you, Dad. I'll back in Europe's big time. Have a fantastic day, guys. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for the next episode of the EA FC Career Mode very soon.